sure a lot of you know that we have a talk today on uh, banking and the Federal Home Loan Bank. And this reminded me of a friend of mine who uh, visited his bank manager and said he wanted to start a small business. So he said, how do I start a small business? And the manager replied, start a large one and wait six months. <laughs> Some of you uh, may have picked up a pecan cookie today. I don't know if, uh, I know I got turned, turned down a few times, but to, the reason for this is because today is National Pecan Cookie Day. Oh. And each year on September 21st, people share a pecan cookie with each other. And my husband asked me yesterday, he said, so are you going to give him a pecan cookie? And I said, oh, well, that's a great idea. <laughs> Stupid me. So I said, yes, and I made you some pecan cookies. There are some extra, so please take them as you step out today. We will um, officially get our meeting started with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jim McCullough will do our invocation for us. Matthew Fox is a contemporary Catholic, Roman Catholic theologian who wrote the book on compassion, literally wrote the book on compassion. He has a book, it's entitled Compassion, a, spirit, a spirituality named Compassion. It's subtitled Uniting Mystical Awareness with Social Justice. Uh, and his thesis for this book is that compassion is the richest natural resource in the world. But he also goes on to say in the book that it's being held captive in our Western culture. That we're not, that we have not made good use of this rich energy resource. And I think that's true, but the other side of that is what we have seen in the last few weeks as our country has experienced so many natural disasters, uh, hurricanes and now an earthquake. And we have seen vividly uh, in the news reports of um, the energy uh, of compassion at work as, and we have all <coughs> participated in that in the various ways that we have given through our own resources. I'm proud to say every day I come, every time I come to Rotary that compassion is not being held captive uh, in Rotary in this club or in Rotary International. I'm a relatively new member of Rotary, but I'm very proud to be a member where compassion seems to play such an important part to make our world a more just and peaceful place. And I say, thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jim. And Karen Hill will do our guest introductions for us today. <coughs> Chairwoman Grace. I have, I, if I have them all, we've got four sets of hosts and guests today. If, when, when called, both host and guest would stand. And then um, when the introduction is made, if the guests would remain standing until all are called, we will acknowledge you all at that time. First up, Blanche Parks has a guest, Eric Grosspitch from Washburn University a prospective member, I see. Yes, hi, uh, fellow Rotarians, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Eric Grosspitch. He is Vice President of Student Life and All Activities at Western University. He has completed his application and will become a member. Okay. Thank you. Yana Ross, standing in for Larry Goronsky, has a guest. Hi, I would like to introduce you Darcy Latorno. Uh, she's, uh, she lives in Lawrence, but works here in Topeka for Alzheimer's Association, and she's a prospective member. Thank you. Grace Morrison. Thank you. I'm very pleased to introduce for the second time Cheryl Rios, who is my friend and uh, prospective member, and in fact, she has turned in her application. Uh, Cheryl is the Shawnee County District Court Judge, and he, she hears 
felony criminal cases. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Last but not least, Jim McCullough has a guest. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Earl New. We have known her as a part of District 501 for a number of years. She's currently, as of this year, the Director of Certified <coughs> Personnel slash Equity. Very glad to have you with us. Are there any others? Welcome, all of you. have you all with us today. Um, our Cut Money this month, again, is Kansas Children's Service League advocating for children and families to prevent child abuse and to strengthen families, so please give generously. We have several announcements today. Sam Karkoff, if you would come forward and give us our weekly encouragement. Thanks, Grace. This is my friend, uh, Bruce Kaufman over here. We're up here for Paleo Plus just to tell you all that's coming up uh, in October. And uh, first is I've been doing some investigating uh, work on uh, helping us get to our goals and also to help us and Paul Harris uh, matching uh, monies to help uh, you get a Paul Harris award or to add to the one you already have. But I just want to give you a, uh, I just want to give you an example of what your giving can do for Polio Plus real quick, but we'll talk a little bit more about this, and this is a pretty cool deal. If usually when Terry will give $100 to Polio Plus this year, we have the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who is also a big uh, supporter of uh, Illumination of Polio, will give a $200 match uh, from their fund. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, Hurst, okay? The district will match, our district will match $100 of that, and Rodeo International will match $50 of that. So if you give $100 to Polio Plus, for each hundred you give, the total of Polio Plus is $450, which is a huge multiplier, but we have to do it during the month of October when Polio Plus uh, will be uh, our main focus. Another example is, and this is where Hearst comes in, <clears throat> for those of you who are looking for a Paul Harris Award and would like to get some uh, matching points for maybe donating $500, the club will match $500 of that, your club will match $500 of that, and that will qualify you for a Paul Harris Award, which is about the cheapest way I can think of, that you get to be a Paul Harris Fellow, which is a good deal. The Gates Foundation will match $1,000 of that, the district will match $500, the Rotary International will give $250. So, if you give a $500 donation on your own, that's $2,250 to Polio Plus. It's a great deal. Now, I think that's good. I got another one for you. <laughs> if you give $1,000, there's no club match to get to Paul Harris because $1,000 is a qualifier for the Paul Harris Award or if you get an additional one. Uh, the Gates match would be $2,000, the district match would be $1,000, and Rotary International would, will match up to $500. So if you give $1,000 uh, to Polio Plus uh, during the month of October, the total of Polio Plus, if you donate 1000 as a Rotarian, the, the payback is $4,500. So, think about that. <laughs> now. I don't know if first one say anything about another thing we, that they've been working on, and that is, uh, and maybe you don't want to talk about the points, or do you? That's okay. Well, cover me on this one. We have people in this club who've been, really been giving to uh, uh, the Paul Harris Awards and have all these points, and I'm telling if I'm wrong about this. But they can transfer their points. If you have gobs of points and you're never going to be able to use them, there's a mechanism whereby uh, we can use some of those points to help you match to get to a Paul Harris Award, nothing to do with Polio Plus except those of you, it all kind of flows together uh, in that, but there are ways to get you uh, some uh, matching points or matching points for the dollars you give uh, out of your pocket to get a Paul Harris Award. Did I say that right? That's right. Okay. All right. That's all. I know this is probably, your eyes are all rolling back in your heads, there'll be more, but believe me, the Polio Plus thing is really a good deal this year with all these matches. You get a Paul Harris Award and you get big chunks of it. Uh, toward that, so I hope you all will uh, uh, think about that in month of October. And that's all I got. So Sam, who do yeah. we call if we need a little reconstruction of all that? Me, Sam. Me. 
Sam is a Polio Plus Chair for this year for our club, and he's doing a great job. We're learning a lot about Polio Plus during Polio Plus Month, which is the month of October coming up. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. Okay. Talking about Paul Harris Awards, uh, when a member of the club or any individual, you don't have to be even a member of our club to give to the Rotary International Foundation, but when you donate to either Polio Plus or just to the Rotary, to the Rotary International Foundation, <laughs> At the level of $1,000, then you receive what we consider to be the highest award in Rotary International, which is a Paul Harris Fellow. And today we would like to recognize one of our members who is receiving his Paul Harris Plus One, and that is Randy Peterson. Randy, if you'd come forward, please. <laughs> We appreciate very much your commitment to Rotary International and the Rotary International Foundation, and thank you. Do you want to thank make you. a comment about your interest in Rotary International Foundation? Well, sure. Um, particularly the Polio Plus. Uh, I remember I was chair of the uh, Junction City Rotary Club, and I think about that time Polio Plus was really getting kicked off. And as you can tell, we were. Uh, a long term into this and uh, I think with the Gates Foundation maybe we can get it done. So it's an exciting time. Thanks. Jim McCullough, if you'd make your way back up here, and I just wanted to give you an update on uh, hurricane relief. We, our club was asked to help with the hurricanes of relief, and our district governor, Adam Ellert, requested that we, each club, give the equivalent of $5 per member. And our club, our total at this point, and if you still want to give, that's great, uh, we have donated $1,985 from our club, and that is $11 per person. So you all give yourselves a hand. That's great. We <laughs> have an announcement about peace. The fifth annual peace party that we have sponsored each year <clears throat> through the Topeka Center for Peace and Justice will be set October the 17th. It's here at the Ramada Inn, upstairs in the Grand Ballroom. And we'd like to invite all of you to be there. Um, the uh, awardees are listed both on the flyers that we put on each one of the tables uh, and also on the screen here today. So um, October 17th, 6.30 p.m., doors open at 6. And um, we plan to recognize Rotary for all the help that you have given us in making it possible for us to do what we are doing. And by the way, this morning, this morning, we began our third training of um, uh, teachers slash administrators for doing uh, training for restorative practices in our schools. And we have uh, a number from 501 that as of this uh, training today, we have a couple more from Seaman and also a few from District 437. So we're pleased to say that this is really um, uh, the whole idea of restorative practices in public schools is really taking off as a result of what you have done for us, the Peace Center. Um, and so I thank you for that. I hope you can come to the party and help us celebrate. Thank you, Jim, and thanks for all the work you're doing toward peace. We are ready for our uh, speaker introduction, so Phil, if you'd come on up. <coughs> well, it's my pleasure to introduce Ryan Gilliland. Ryan is the Vice President and Government Relations Officer at Federal Home Loan Bank, uh, and he's here to give us current happenings, I think, going on um, at the bank. Uh, Ryan joined Federal Home Loan Bank in March 2016 as a Government Relations Officer, and before uh, joining FHLA Bank, Gilliland served as the Manager of State Government Affairs for ITC 
Great Plains, and prior to his tenure at ITC, he worked in the Kansas legislature, serving as the chief of staff in the offices of the Senate president and the House majority leader. Uh, Ryan also worked as a public relations and legislative intern at the uh, Polsonelli uh, Pols Law Firm. He's a graduate of Washburn University, and Ryan and his wife Nikki and their two sons reside here in Topeka, and I understand from talking to him he just has a new puppy too. <laughs> so, will you join me in uh, welcoming Ryan Gelfman. Well, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to be here. Um, I am honored to be here, and I'm sure you hear that from pretty much everybody that stands up here. But I actually mean it because uh, my father was a Rotarian, is a Rotarian, and so I grew up coming to these meetings uh, whenever there was somebody interesting. So I apologize, I probably would not have been here today. When I was a kid. Um, but nonetheless, this is this is fun. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to do it. And to prove to you, I brought a prop uh, that I am a credentialed supporter of the Rotarians. I was given this my senior year by the Concordia Rotary Club, and has since been in every office that I've been in. It's a, it's a little token here with the four-way test on it, and uh, it's traveled with me to every job I've had, and you would be amazed how many times uh, folks notice it, and we have a good discussion about it. And obviously the four-way test would be uh, helpful to a lot of our leaders right now, um, so maybe work on getting them, uh, you know, that could be a new initiative for us. Um, but luckily for everybody, I am not here to talk about politics whatsoever today. Um, I'm here to talk about the Federal Home Loan Bank and our mission. Um, there will not be much crowd participation, but I always enjoy asking this. How many of you are familiar with what we do? Excellent, okay. Well, that knocks out the first half of my speech. <laughs> Seven minutes now. Um, so, as most of you probably know then, we serve um, as a conduit to banks, credit unions, insurance companies uh, throughout a four-state region. We cover Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado. Uh, 49.7 billion in assets and 2.2 billion in capital. Uh, 240 employees and pretty steady at that. Uh, we'll be growing a little bit uh, as we go into our new building and I'll obviously get into that here in a moment. Um, but I always think the story of how we came to be is interesting, and, and without getting into the long version of it, um, we, were, we were a sweetheart deal. And uh, when Charles Curtis was vice president, um, and the Federal Home Loan Bank system was established, he basically had said, hey, we're getting one at Topeka. Mm -hmm. So it's funny whenever I'm in Washington or, or with my peer groups uh, from the other Federal Home Loan Banks, and you see us mentioned next to them, um, <laughs> I'll show you the map here. It's pretty easy to tell which one doesn't necessarily look like the others. Uh, you know, San Francisco, Dallas, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Boston, and then little old Topeka. So um, I think it's really cool, though, to have a federal home loan bank centered in Topeka. And a lot of folks don't necessarily understand what it is we do and, and how vital we are to the financial world and, and to uh, communities through, through our institutions that are our members. Um, we are structured as a cooperative and we provide um, liquidity to our members. So most of the money that you're gonna be lent at a, at a lender isn't gonna come from deposits, they can't support that. So um, that's where we come in and, and we're a stable liquidity provider for those institutions. They buy stock in us, so we're a cooperative. Uh, so their success is truly our success. And um, throughout that four state region, our goal is to be a community builder with them, to partner with them, to enable them to go in and compete. If you're out in St. Francis, Kansas, you should be able to offer the same kind of products that you can get um, in the more urban parts of the state or, or in the urban parts of the nation. Uh, so as we become a more global economy and a more global society, I think our mission is more important than ever, and particularly in Topeka, um, being a little bit more rural than a lot of our peers, even in the federal home loan bank system, um, I think it's a unique calling. So. In its simplest form, we're a bank to the banks. That's the easiest way to describe it to folks. And um, we have had a lot of great success. And we are turning a new chapter uh, today. Or actually, we broke ground in May on our next 
big project, but um, one of the best parts of the bank is that our culture is very much centered in Topeka. Our new CEO, Mark Yardley, who I'm sure many of you may know, is as humble and down to earth as anybody he could ever meet. Uh, his door is always open, and I think he sets a tone that, that sort of permeates our culture at the bank, where it's a lot of Washburn graduates walking around, it's a lot of Kansans walking around, it's a lot of folks that have been there for quite some time, and I do think that identity exists in some of the other federal home loan banks, and certainly in some of the other federal institutions um, of this size. So that's a big part of our story, that's a big part of who we are, and I contend that's a big part of the success of the Federal Home Loan Bank, is that we have homegrown talent, homegrown leadership, um, and that community's at the core of our mission. So um, we're growing, and we occupy a space that's about 52,000 square feet right now in the Security Benefit Building and our lease was up, security benefits growing as well, and so it came time to decide what was next. And, um, you know, as part of that process, our board, in, in its due diligence, was looking at the other places in our district, you know, Denver, Oklahoma City, there's a lot of um, interesting talent and uh, interesting things going on in these different parts of the district. So there was a real possibility that um, the bank could move. and. Uh, thankfully, after careful consideration uh, and a lot of help from the community and a lot of support from the community, uh, we made the determination to stay. And this is our permanent home. And we're building a little building up on Fifth and Wanamaker that will really sort of signify that. And I think that's the importance of that building, is it really signifies our permanence in Topeka and our mission as a, as a community builder and as an integral part of Topeka. Um, so we're pretty proud of it. And that was an active choice. Um, and like I say, this community is a major part of identi our identity. So um, building it signifies uh, that investment. So here's a picture of, uh, this would be looking from the south, um, if you were on 6th Street. And I don't know why it's cloudy. I, I was looked at that rendering and thought, why would you make it cloudy? It's always <laughs> sunny at the Federal Home Loan Bank to be. <laughs> But as you can see, one of the goals with the building was to really try to tie it into the natural landscape and to uh, preserve as much as we could. So um, you have 22 acres up there. Uh, the new building will be 95,000 square feet. Uh, but one interesting thing here, we agreed to maintain 70% of the existing trees. We'll be adding another 20 evergreens and ornamental trees, 150 ornamental trees. Um, and we also wanted to keep it local with our design team, with our engineering teams, with the construction team. Don't hold me to it, but uh, as of last fall, I think every one of our subcontractors was still a Kansas company. Um, and we've, we've made that a priority that we want this building to be built by Kansans. And uh, so far, we've had pretty good luck in, in maintaining that. And then at the bottom, you see there, we are LEED Gold certified, or the, the goal is to be LEED Gold certified. And so if you're not familiar with that, um, it is an initiative of the U.S. Green Building Council. They, they sanction it, essentially. And what they do is they set up a metric, and you have to achieve a certain level of points by doing different things that, that are environmentally friendly, both inside and out. That can be uh, things as minor as using paint that is not, uh, that's low in VOCs, that, uh, or glue for the carpet that's low in VOCs. It's, it's holistic, so everything in the building inside and outside is meant to be environmentally friendly uh, and responsible for our employees, for our staff. Um, and there are, we will join Frito-Lay, Mars, and one of the buildings out of Forbes to be the fourth LEED Gold Certified Building in Topeka, assuming uh, we get our points. And that gives us national recognition and also helps with recruitment and uh, retention for our employees. We want to get the best employees, we want to maintain the best employees, and that's part of it. So like I say, it's, it's a holistic approach for us. Um, so the bulk of the credit that we're going to get on our lead gold pursuit is going to come from the fact that uh, everything will be heated and cooled uh, by a geothermal field. And this to me is the coolest part of the building. So everything we do up there in terms of heating and cooling is going to come from these wells. And I don't know how well you can see, but there's a, a trench where you can see the piping coming in and you can see one of the, the wells being drilled there. Uh, but the numbers on this are astounding. So there are eight independent sections 
with 12 wells that are 400 feet deep for a total of 96 wells. We drilled 96 400 foot wells um, up on the hill before we got started. And that'll support heating, cooling, our server room cooling, uh, all of our domestic hot water, as well as a snow melt system. So when you combine that with solar panels that we're gonna have on the roof, uh, this building will be 40% more efficient uh, than a standard building this size, and will be the most efficient commercial building in Topeka, which we're really proud of. And I, like I said, I think the, the geothermal approach was, was not something that's cheap. In the long term, it, it will have an impact on our bottom line. Uh, but it was also just the right thing to do for us. So we're, we're pretty proud of that fact. So I've got a few renderings here and uh, I hope everybody can see. Um, you'll notice it's, it's very modern on the inside. This will be our, our entryway. Uh, the new address is 500 Southwest Wanamaker if you were to commit it to memory now. Um, and we've got a lot of natural touches. You can tell there's sort of a natural feel to the building and that was part of the goal was to blend the modern with with the natural aesthetic of, of our location up there. This would be uh, from the other side of the building, um, from the north, uh, looking out <coughs> onto Topeka. Uh, you'll also see this is our parking lot, which will include trees, which will include native grass, and uh, bioswales, which will capture all the rainwater off of the parking lot and retain it for our use as well. So that's another um, lead gold pursuit uh, initiative. Got a little walkway here to cover us from uh, the elements since it's Kansas after all. And again, that's looking uh, south from the, from the other direction. That'll be the front of the building, so to speak. <coughs> Another shot of our lobby here as you come in. On the left side, uh, you'll see the entrance to what will be a cafe. We have an on-site cafeteria and cafe, uh, which is handy, obviously. Got a workout room complete with ping pong table and a great view, this will be on the lower floor looking south, so you'll get all those views of, of Topeka and the Wanamaker Corridor there. Um, but like I said, this building is meant to affirm our commitment to Topeka um, and attract the best talent possible. Um, I do think it's notable that we are truly a national institution that's thriving in Topeka, and we want to share that mission. We want to share our building as, as time goes on. If, if there are ways that we can partner with you, um, we want to do that, you know, and it's not just always sponsorships. We're happy to always help uh, with Freedom Fest and things like that, but uh, beyond that, we want to be a true community partner. So this building is, is our building uh, as a community as well, and so we, we hope that uh, you'll find you, unique ways to, to hopefully participate with us. Um, and this, this community, like I say, is truly central to our identity. So we, we appreciate the support we've gotten, uh, not only from members and of this body and, and uh, from some of the Rotarians here today, but the community in general. And we are so happy to be a part of it. We're so happy to be staying here. We're so happy to uh, continue this investment in Topeka. So if you've got any questions, uh, there's my information. Feel free to contact me. And if you've got any right now, go ahead and far away. Sitting where you do up there with all that glass, what do you do in the event of a tornado? So in the basement area, it's, you know, it's built sort of like a split level. So the north side is entirely concrete and built into the ground. And we've got a large enough space to accommodate everybody. So yeah, protect your shades that come down on the windows. It's, it's, the whole room is concrete on all four sides. No, I mean upstairs. Oh, <laughs> that I don't know. OK. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah. How many Kansas banks? Thank you. Kansas institutions, um, I would have to check on the actual number. It fluctuates. Um, in Kansas, the bulk of our membership comes from banks. We do have some credit unions. In Colorado, that's much more uh, credit union based. Um, but in Kansas, I want to say we're around 300. Yeah. I always had a smart banking question like Andy had, but mine's more of a golly question on the geothermal thing. <laughs> you said that's going to support the heating, which makes it sound like if I dug a hole 400 feet deep, I would strike steam or something. Is that what you no, need? No, or what's, just what's, how's that work? <laughs> so as I understand it, the, the ground is constantly regulated that deep. 
and so you pump the, the water in or the fluid in and cycle it through. There's a whole system that all those, that, that trough that I had showed you, all those run into the building into one central location in the basement, and we've got a whole system that exchanges all the fluid and, and does its magic. It's like a really, really deep, deep pump for your house. Yeah. It's not a well like you struck, you struck heat. <laughs> no, it's, it's confusing as well. You think you hit something. It's, it is just a big hole. Right. Yeah. I, it's, it's a statement more than a question, just so you all know. You know, was it five states? Six states? Re what's your region? Four states. Four states. Four states. No. Um, just so you know, and they're headquartered in Topeka, but, you know, Cornerstone of Topeka, which I'm the executive director of, Habitat for Humanity. Uh, other local not-for-profits uh, have applied to their programs, and um, we compete with uh, other organizations from Nebraska, Oklahoma, um, Colorado, um, and sometimes we don't get them, and sometimes we do. I know this last year, I know Habitat uh, got a big grant, and so did we, and ours, it's about a two-year program, but we're going to be able to rehab and put in new roofs and new HVAC systems and windows for 30 of our uh, affordable housing units, thanks to the Federal Home Loan Bank and their program. So that is a, they're a regional, and they have to be located here, but that is, those are Topeka not-for-profits that are benefiting. I mean, it's a long process, and it's a very detailed application, but we compete with everybody, and you know, sometimes we win. And, Anyway, I just want to tell you that those are just, you know, the Toto program, you guys have heard of Toto, Speak Opportunity to Own. Uh, I think Karen Hiller is here. Thank Karen for that name. Uh, but that is uh, partially funded by Federal Home Loan Bank. Uh, so I just want to give you guys props for Thank you so much. Those I really good appreciate programs that. that we compete for. Anyway. And, and while we're a cooperative, we do return a dividend to our members. Uh, we also have our retained earnings, 10% of which every year go to uh, those types of initiatives. We have first time home buyer programs, we have uh, a number of competitive grants. Uh, district wide in the four state region last year, that totaled 16 million. So um, there's obviously a monetary element to our community support as well, and that's, that's gonna be ongoing. That's never gonna change. What are the details on the new dog? <laughs> Luckily, I'm far enough away that you can't see the bags under my eyes. But he's uh, got a little French bulldog named Stitch. He's, he's not even close to the house train, but uh, we've, we've managed to work it out. When I'm not on the road, uh, it's a little easier. <laughs> that was probably a really good note to leave on, but <laughs> thanks um, to Chris for mentioning and thanks to you. I was involved in Toto and I've served on your regional affordable housing advisory board for two terms as well and it's the, the bank really is awesome i wanted to ask a couple questions back to the technology side okay um also to mention uh, regarding the geothermal if people are interested it, it's so exciting to see those those front end cutting edge technology things happening the monroe school where the Roundy board is um, was redone with geothermal now some years ago and so people want to know how well that's gone you could check with them and then the bank as you get underway. I remember when Security Benefit built their building and you moved into it and it was the most state-of-the-art building in town. And what I recall that was a marvel to many of us was the first um, environmentally controlled office cube spaces as well as your conference room that, that then was totally wired for audio, video, teleconferencing you offered that we might be able to come use your space. So I wanted to ask a little more about the capacity of what state-of-the-art technology you have in your spaces and if they really would be available to people here for mm -hmm. events. Well, it's certainly all gonna be wired. Um, and we, most every one of the rooms at this point is gonna have some kind of projector. We'll have some IT video conferencing type of capabilities. Um, I've probably gotten way ahead of my skis as far as offering all of them to everybody, but <laughs> we'll work that out. I will work that out. Um, but uh, no, it's, and it's interesting, the, the amount of detail that went into planning something like this. At one point there was even a discussion of 
how many exterior offices we could have because the sunlight was a factor in regulating the temperature. So we couldn't have a ton of offices that were going to block sunlight coming in because um, in, in chasing this LEED Gold certification, using the actual sunlight for, for heat purposes was an important part of the calculation. So it's kind of impressive. So Ryan, um, what are the, how many employees do you have? What is the total amount of your salaries that come? And what are the, the key primary services that the bank provides? So 240 employees. Um, I don't understand the question on the salaries. What did you mean by that? I want to know how much total you're paying. All of, I'm trying to so see how much money comes payroll. into ours as a result. Payroll. Of payroll. Oh, I understand. I understand. I don't know the number for total payroll. I, I've only been around a little over a year. So I think that's why they send me out here. Uh, but, uh, I can tell you that my friends who work for home, Federal Home Loan Bank love it. They're well paid. They're one of the premier employers in our area. And they are very promoting of diversity and balance of life. So as a, an employer in Topeka, Kansas, that would attract talent and keep talent, I think you're doing a great job, because a lot of my friends hate to work, and they like to work there. Well, I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're safe with lots. Yeah, yeah. Lots no, it's, it's like I said, that's a cultural thing, and, and we are taken care of, and I'll get that number for you, but... Um, they do an excellent job of taking care of employees, but it, it starts with our culture, and that starts with, with Mark Yardley at the top. And, and there's a lot of Topekans who have been there a long time, and um, that's a big part of our success. I, I just say this about the, the, the wages. They would be very high-paying jobs, all right? And what we're doing in Topeka and downtown is critical for them and other people who are trying to attract the same people who talk about mm -hmm. derivatives, and hedge funds and hedging, you know, at a New York type place, you know, all of the things we're doing is really critical for for, for security benefit at Federal Home Loan Bank to attract the works for the force that you want. I Absolutely see, like I can't it. even see Vince's lips move. No, it, it takes some very specialized talent to do what we do. Uh, every day, uh, I look at Charles Curtis and the statue downtown, and obviously he's made a, a significant impact in this community, and that's why we honor him. And so if you're downtown, if you're right in front of Mobert's, oftentimes I think it's a real person, it's a realistic <laughs> it's significant to this community. If you're into social media, we encourage you to take a selfie with Charles Curtis and tag us and we'll beam it across the world. Thank you so much. Brian, rather than uh, giving you a coffee mug or something like that that you would never use and just collect us, we, it's our policy to um, donate a book to a local school, to Ross Elementary, in your honor. And we'd ask you to sign this. Uh, today's is Captain Underpants and the Sensational Saga of Sir Stinks a Lot. Two other things. One is we know that you are you have rotary somewhere in your blood, and we'd like to give you this year's rotary coin, which is really cool, I think. And this year's uh, rotary motto is making a difference. On the back is the four-way test. You may keep this. You may pass it on to someone else, but we'd like to give this to you. And finally, we know. You opened the door for me, and I'm so excited about this. We would like to invite you to become a member of our Rotary Club. And here is the best Next 
week we will be meeting upstairs in the Ramada Grand, and next week's meeting is going to be really fun. It's a, our club's 104th birthday, and we are going to have a birthday party. Um, a lot of planning has gone into this, and we're going to have a, a service project that will be really fun during the meeting. Uh, so this is something to absolutely not be missed. And we will need um, a few volunteers afterwards if someone could volunteer maybe a car and an hour or so after. If you can see Linda, just so we'll make sure we've got a little bit of help with um, the secret that I will tell you about next week. Um, so today I would like to leave you with uh, the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson, who said, it is one of the most beautiful compensations of life that no man can sincerely try to help another without helping himself. So please stand and we will close with the four-way test plus one. Other things we think, say, or do, will it be beneficial for all concerned? And will it 